Okay, we're going to make a concept um, which is inspired by the awesome UI kit which is available free from um, uxpin.com. Now, we've previously looked at this in another screencast, but this is just um, Photoshop files or other files that you can download for other programs as you sketch and you can then use these and adapt them in, in your design work. As we looked at before, they're very simple to create, but downloading them gives you an idea of being inspired and how to create them. So R1 is gonna have a similar feel to this, um, which is, as we looked at before, quite a standard um, for design um, currently for websites. Now, what you will need to do is find some images and a good place to go is Flickr. And if you're looking in Flickr, um, search for um, Creative Commons and just Creative Commons only and also ones that allow modification. This will mean when you find one you sort of like, it will give um, a disclaimer about um, the copyright and say most of it needs attribution, which means that, that you've got a link back to the person who's created it and give them credit for that image, um, list it somewhere possible. Um, but the main thing is with these ones is you're not supposed to use them for commercial purposes. So it's just using them in your projects um, for playing around with rather than something that you're going to sell on and make money out of it. So take that on board. And if you do use it, especially in projects or assignments, make sure you refer where you found those images, but basically just search for Creative Commons and ones that you can change. If you have something down here that says all rights reserved, then you can't use it. If it says some rights uh, reserved, check out what that means and make a link back to the person who has created it and give them credit for that and don't pass it off as your work. Right, okay, so I've looked through here. I found these Creative Commons copyright free images and I've downloaded the selection of them. Uh, to suit my project right so once you've downloaded those you i've looked at this uh, website to get some inspiration the uh, mock-ups here and i'm going to start building one in photoshop now here's a file that's been opened in photoshop and it has all these different components on there which we've looked at before so we're going to buy you know create a similar um, feel or layout now, lots of different ways you can make it in Photoshop. Photoshop has lots of options. Also, you could make it in the Illustrator or also uh, the Mac only sketch is a really good one for making uh, user interface components. Now, I'll just reset uh, the layout here. Now, again, we've looked at um, how to make the 960 grid and I'm going to go to the window menu and actions. Now the 960 grid, you can download the action uh, resources from uh, 960.gs and you download it and once you set it up here as an action in Photoshop, um, you have a folder in the actions and you can have 12, 16 or 24. I'm gonna go for a, a 12 column grid and I just press play. Now that will just create a layout for me now because my one's going to be sort of you know quite long i'm going to have lots of um, items on here the first thing i'll do is go to the image menu and i go to canvas size not image size canvas size and all i need to do is make it longer so i anchor the point at the top and the height um i'll just change currently to 3000 now it might be the case i might have to add a bit of space or take it away later but i'll just add 3000 to make it 3000 for the height and that will make it quite a long um, layout now you'll see here uh, these uh, layouts on here for the grid is all the column structure stops abruptly so if I can just drag them out for hold the shift key and keep on going down here all the way down to the bottom and then click the commit button at the top it just drag those out and as you can see down here in the layers they can be turned on and off and you can press command uh, semicolon to turn off the guides if you wanted to or control semicolon on a pc and you can turn them back on so you can you know turn everything off if you so wish i'll just turn those back on now once that's set up um, we're going to start laying out our components on here so we're going to start off with our header um, at the top, which is going to have some items in here. 
Okay, I'm going to have it going right across the top. It's going to be um, sort of like one of these big hero images. So I go to the um, file menu and I go open. Okay, um, I've renamed the images that I downloaded from um, Flickr and I need to find my first one, which is going to be the banner. And I uh, just click on that and I will open it. Now here it is, uh, it's quite a large image on here. So what I will do is I will crop it. I'll just take it down a little bit like that. And then I can always scale it when I bring it in. I rip off the tab here and get the move tool and I'll just drag and drop it on here. It's quite large. I hold the shift key. I go in from one of the corners and I'm gonna move it up here and place it on the top. And I'll just, again, use the uh, shift key and bring that in and when I'm happy press the commit button or press enter or return now that's set up there on the top now I'm going to bring over my layers here so they can be seen um, so the first one here I've got my image set up so it's always important to name them so I'm going to start off and name my first image and if I put it here I'll call it city image now I'll call it city image now what you can do is you can put something like an overlay on this image. Now I can come along and do a number of things to it. What I want to do is, is take out its color. So if I go to the image menu and I go adjustments and I go U and saturation, and all I need to do is take the saturation down and that will make it into more of a grayscale image and I click OK. Now I'll, to darken it down, there's a number of techniques you can use. First one, uh, go to layer and you can go to layer style and you can say color overlay. Now color overlays are really useful because you can adjust them later on. So all you do is you pick some sort of color, we pick almost like black here. We can then take this down and what the color overlay will do is just take it down like that. The other thing you can do is have a background which we'll look at a bit later on. So here's one way you can do with a color overlay and you can just sort of fade it out and have it like that. So it's quite dark in the background. And once we've done that, we set that up. If I take off the, uh, you'll see it's you know, darkened it down. So that makes it useful um, for laying text over the top. Now, once I've got that, I will now um, create a new folder here or a group. So if I go up to the top here, and I'll just go from the options and go new group from layers. And I will call this a uh, header banner. And I click OK. And now my city image is inside there. Now I need to put some text in there and I need to put some buttons. So first of all, um, I'll just get my text. And once I've got that, I'm going to select appropriate font. I'm on um, an Apple Mac, so I can Helvetica um, new, and I can come along here, make it a little bit bigger to begin with. And once I've got that, I can come over here and I'll just click. I'll make sure my text is white up here. You can turn off the um, turn on the web safe colors that helps you get the straight white. Once I've got that, I can type in bright. Uh, lights, big city. Okay. So once I've got that, I can move that into place across here and set that up. Again, we're using the grid to um, set up all our objects on here. So we've got that set up with our first button right across the top. Now once I've got that, I will now um, put in a little subheading so I've got my text there I need to put in a subheading okay with the subheading and make sure I take the uh, font size down a little bit as it was on 72 I'll take it down to um, 24 to begin with I can adjust it later what I will do is drag it out to make a paragraph text and then I'll just paste in here um, it's put it centered so I can change it and move it over and once I've got my little subheading on there, I can adjust that around. If I get the T for text, I can actually adjust the text box to move it around. Now what you can do is you can put hyphenation and turn it off. So if I bring up the options up here, I get to paragraph 
and to hyphenate and turn that off. Okay, so I set that up and I click the tick. So I've got in here my little subheading that I've got on there. Now what you can do um, is, you know, you can adjust the text and change things around how you would want it. Also, if you're finding out that certainly the overlay on the image you know, could be a little bit darker, I could come up here and take that up so you can, um, it's easier to see the text. Also turning off the guides, either control semicolon or command semicolon. Okay, so we've done those things and set that up. Um, now the next thing we're gonna do is have two buttons here. These will probably be a bit meaningless. They're just part of the design. And um, one's gonna be a solid button and the other one's gonna be a ghost button. Again, easy to do. What we will do is we'll blow up a little bit here. I'll go down to the shapes and you can either get a rounded rectangle or we can just go for the ordinary rectangle and you can modify it later. Now, once we've got that, I'll go just underneath here and I'll sort of drag out uh, a button. Again, if you were laying it out and you've done your plans, you do it to a certain size. And what it will do is just drag it out about this sort of side here, making sure I'm using the guides to move it around and place it into um, a position. Just go across those two there and then have that. Now up in the, the actual live properties, which are sort of up here, you'll get a button in Photoshop there. Or if you go into the um, window menu, you'll bring up properties. Sometimes live properties can be a bit difficult and you can't get them up here. If that's the case, you need to sort of get something like the black arrow head and uh, for the path selection tool and it will bring it up. Okay, so we've got that. Now the first one, we're gonna make that sort of an orangey color. So up here, we have the background and I'm going to bring up um, something like make it a, a, a say a, a sort of an, an, an orangey color on there. Let's see, is that okay? I'll make it about that color. Okay, so make it an orangey color and also it doesn't have a, um, a border or a stroke on it. Now once I've done that, um, it says in here rectangle, so we need to name them uh, appropriately. So this is going to be the download um, button. So I'll just call that down load button. Now, once I've got that, I will need to put some uh, text on there. So I've got T for text again. Um, probably need to take the font size down a little bit more, maybe 14. See how that goes. I'll just click a little bit away from it here and I'll put down load on the bottom there. And then I'll bring that up. Put it in here, maybe make it a little bit bigger. I'm holding the shift key, just drag it out a bit and sort of line it up to find out where the actual centers of that is. We'll center it up. Okay, so once I've got it in the position I want it, um, here's those two items here, the download text and download button. And what I can do is shift click both of them. And what I can do is link them. So they'll just work as one unit now together, okay? So once that's been done, I will, we'll, with them both selected, I'll press uh, Command J on an Apple or Control J on a PC. And what that will do will be to copy both of them. So it's got button copy, so it's selected them there. And all I will do is I can press the Shift key and sort of hold that and drag it across. Now it depends on how I'm gonna have it. I have the two gaps, so I'll take it over there and have it like that. Now, once I've got that, I need to amend these. So what I will do, oops, is I will rename them. So the one, I will just get rid of the copy of the button and I will need to rename them. So one's gonna be um, called Learn More. So I'm having Learn Ghost because this is gonna be button learn ghost button and this one here the text we're going to certainly change that so I click on the text and I'm going to put learn more and type that in commit here now I just need to change the button so I click on the actual button background there and if I go up here what I will do is in the live options I click on there I'm going to turn off the background and then also I'm going to put a stroke on it. So the stroke is going to be white 
but we don't want it too thick. It's got three pixels of the default. I'll put in uh, one. So what it's done, it's taken it down. So now um, it's only uh, one pixel on the, so it's around that. So that's a ghost button. Now, once that's um, set up, um, we've got all that those things set up. That is our first part of our page concept done. I'll just take off the guides and there it is all laid out nicely on our page. Now the next thing we're going to do is have a section under here or you can call them features. Uh, we'll call them a section 